away from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like all the way from the start. Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today I have a new tutorial and we're going to talk about getting your mixes ready for mastering. Now, this is specifically when you want to send your mix off to a, another mastering engineer to do the master, or maybe you want to master it in a separate session, maybe in a separate studio. And uh, I just want to show you the optimal uh, settings that you want to have for your mix so that you can do what you need to do in that process. Now, I don't want to cause confusion because a lot of my videos, I am mixing and doing a little bit of mastering on the stereo bus because I'm the last person who's going to touch that in terms of uh, levels, in terms of really everything. So when it leaves the DAW, when I export it as a wave or an MP3, that is the release version. So I'm doing a lot of the mastering in the same session. Um, and that's why my attitudes for things like clipping, uh, you know, if I'm clipping a channel here or there, I'm not as worried about it because I'm dealing with it directly in that session. Now, the concerns for clipping and not doing gain staging properly come into play if you're going to be exporting the file and then it's going to be going to somewhere else, a different environment for uh, more processing in the mastering stage. So we don't want to uh, be clipping our stereo output or our master bus most specifically um, and then sending that file off for mastering. It just is not ideal. It's not great practice. So this is where the concept of headroom comes into play. So let's talk about what headroom is. All it is is, is as simple as the uh, difference between the loudest part of your mix and zero or the ceiling where we start to clip in our master. So there's a, a general kind of preference for mastering engineers, a range that is anywhere from 3 dB to 6 dB of headroom is good to have with your mix before you send it off. I think 6 dB is overkill, but it depends on how much work needs to be done in the master. So on this channel, we're trying to achieve 95% uh, of our sound at least in the mix, even a lot of the level, I say, uh, you know, we try to get a lot of that in the mix so that we're not having to do a lot of really heavy processing in the mastering stage. Now, those of you who are not as comfortable mixing, maybe you need a little bit more help in the mastering stage and the engineer is gonna have to do some more heavy EQ, compression, et cetera, then having a little bit more uh, headroom would be helpful for you. So me personally, when I'm mastering, I try to shoot for two or three dB of headroom. But again, it's just personal preference in terms of how much processing you're gonna be doing in the mastering stage. Let me go ahead and play back this session for you, just let you hear what we're working with and just keep an eye on the levels. Start writing, pour the feelings deep into these lines. Naturally, we don't have to force anything. Trying to be more like myself in a world that wants me to be more like anybody else. I did that and came up feeling emptier than Steph felt in 16. So as you can see, I'm not clipping or anything like that. Uh, my kick channel is running a little hot, but again, we're not clipping. So um, we've got some room to work with. However, once everything's getting to our output, it is a little hot and I'm pushing it into a limiter. So the first thing that we want to do to get it ready to send off for mastering is we want to get rid of any kind of limiting or heavy dynamics processing that may be on your stereo bus. So I'm going to go ahead and just disable all that. Now, if you had something like an EQ on here that was uh, just adding a little bit of brightness or something that really defined the mix for you, I would leave that on the channel, uh, but just make sure to get rid of any of the other stuff so that the mastering engineer can do what they need to do. All right, so now we have to consider, do we need to create some headroom? If you're like me, I tend to push my levels a little bit hotter, but uh, just to make sure that they have a little bit of room, it's never a bad idea to create some headroom. So there's two ways of doing this. One of them is more popularly, popularly accepted as kind of best practice. And then there's one that's more my preference and it yields fine results if you do it the right way. But I'm gonna talk about both of them and you can decide on which you'd rather do. So the first option to create headroom is to simply select all your tracks, not including your stereo output, and just bring all the faders down an equal amount to create headroom. The problem with this is in a lot of cases for me, I have pretty complicated uh, sessions where I have a lot of automation going on. 
I may have some interesting sort of parallel processing and dynamics things that once you bring these down, um, it affects the overall mix, which I don't want to do. So again, if you have a fairly straightforward setup or you don't mind going in and editing all your automation and things, you could certainly do that. And again, this is going to be a fine way of creating headroom. Now, what I like to do uh, specifically in the case that you're not clipping a bunch of channels, you know, I don't have any clipping going on on my individual tracks. So it's going to be pretty much the same thing for me to go and just put a gain plug in onto the stereo output. And then we're just gonna pull the gain back to the point where we have, let's just say 3 dB. Start writing, pour the feelings deep into these lines. Naturally, we don't have to force anything. Trying to be more like myself in a world that wants me to be more like anybody else. I did that. Okay, so at that point we've got like 4 dB of headroom. That's plenty. So I would just do that and then I can export it as is now and the mastering engineer is gonna have exactly what they need to do their job. All right, so real quickly, let's talk about the optimal settings for exporting your mix for mastering. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up our uh, bounce window here and we're gonna be exporting a WAV file. I'm gonna leave the resolution at 24 bit. That's what I recorded at. Sample rate, same thing. It's been at 44.1, so we're gonna leave it there. Uh, generally 44.1 is going to be just fine for a, uh, a music release like this. Now, a really important thing with Logic, it generally will have normalize checked to overload protection only. Even that, we wanna turn it off. Just make sure that is all off there. Um, it is never a bad idea to do bounce second cycle pass. Now, what's, what's, what this means is that it will bounce twice and the second pass is going to be the one that will be your wave file. The reason why this is a good idea is because sometimes the plugins have a little bit of delay when you first start the session. So sometimes you'll get like a pop or a click, or even sometimes the uh, the plugins, they take one run through to kind of engage and it can give you some weird results unless you play through it first. So never a bad idea to do that. And then you bounce it out and it is ready to go to mastering. All right, y'all, so that's a couple of thoughts and optimal settings for getting your mix ready to send off to mastering or to do the mastering yourself in a different session and have some headroom to work with. So the key takeaways here are that we want to remove any limiting or dynamics processing from our stereo bus. We want to create at least a little bit of headroom so that if you need to make adjustments in the mastering stage, you can. And you also want to be careful about how you're creating that headroom, depending on if you're clipping your individual channels or if you just need to do a subtle volume gain change on your stereo bus. If you have any questions or comments about getting your mixes ready for mastering, feel free to leave them below. If you learn anything in the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. I had to start writing, pour the feelings deep into these lines. Naturally, we don't have to force anything. Trying to be more like myself in a world that wants me to be more like anybody else. I did that and came up feeling emptier than Steph felt in 16. It was swiftly on the come up. Now I sense the brightness round the corners flashes when we.